then I just kind of got this one done last block. And I, I really like this one the most out of all of the ones I've done so far. Um, it should be a really easy project. There's some cool math because it's a regular hexagon inside of a regular hexagon. Um, but what I want to point out on this, on this gift was really how many I went through, how many mistakes I made in making this. I mean, I feel like I could figure it out every time, and then I screw it up and screw it up. So my first one was I cut, you know, I did the first one was out of a square, and then I inset the, well, actually, I made this the exact same size as the pocket. And then when I forced it in there, it broke. So then I made the pocket a little bit bigger, and then it was too loose, and it played around in there. Um, and then from those, then I did the same thing. I finally got one that kind of worked, but when I took into account the depth of the pocket, I forgot the material that goes behind mother, so this thing stands proud. You know, so it still didn't work. So even though I got the size of the pocket right, finally, after so many tries, then I had to recalibrate for the depth of the pocket. Um, so my point, so here's another trial and error. Here's another one that wasn't quite the right fit. And I think that's the way you come up with better projects. I mean, you, it's a lot of, lot of mistakes, but that's really the whole point of it, is that you learn, and you really learn from your mistakes. I mean, it would be nice if I didn't make so many, but I don't know if I've ever come up with a good project where I haven't made, I don't know, five or ten mistakes getting it, getting it right. And one of the things I really love about learning sewing, even though I don't know anything about sewing, is I really love this process of learning a new skill. And Lord knows, I, I mean, I screw it up more times than I get it right, but I feel like every time I'm getting better and better. Okay, here I am in Mastercam. First thing I do is I always go to machine type, router, I select Techno Servo. That brings in my property manager here. F9 is my cross here, is my Cartesian coordinates. I know the tool I'm using, then I set up my stock. I'm going to use my bit this time in the lower left corner. I'm going to make the piece of wood six inches high in the Y direction and 5.25 in the X. And this is actually hardwood, so it's 13 sixteenths thick. If I want to see that, I can just click display and it'll be on here. Okay. The way I created this is I actually I created a trapezoid first by creating a line. I want the outside of each leg to be three inches long. So I want this three inches at an angle of zero. Um, and then from there, I'm going to create a trapezoid. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to, here's my last operation. I want this to be one unit long exactly. And then it's up at um, 60 degrees. So I'm going to set that to 60. And there it is. And I'll do the same thing again from here. I'm going to make it one unit long. Now it's in the second quadrant. So this is at 120 degrees. And I'll close that trapezoid. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of ways to draw hexagons. This is just one of which. Now that I have that, I'm going to go X form, rotate, select what you want to rotate. I'm done selecting it. How far do you want to rotate it? I'm going to rotate it 60 degrees. And there it is. Um, yeah. And then now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to drag it. So that's X form, drag. I want to drag one, two, three, four parts. I'm done selecting. So that green ball says I'm done selecting. I want to drag it. And you see that square, it'll snap right to it. And that was actually a copy, and I really want to move. Okay. And then I'm going to do that one more time. Uh, X form, rotate. I think I'll rotate. Uh, Maybe I'll rotate this. How far should I rotate this one? Any ideas? Yeah. And now that I've rotated that one, 60. Again, here's my last operation, drag. So I'm going to select it. I'm done selecting it. I'm going to snap that point to that point. And this is fit screen. A lot of ways to do this. Um, this is just one. 
But then now what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to go X form. I'm going to go to mirror. I'm going to select all of this. I'm done selecting. I hit that green ball. I want to mirror it over a line. And I'll just snap on that line. And that will create my hexagon. And then there's clear colors. So again, this is three. This is one. This is two. Because this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, but you can see from here to, all the way across is six inches. And it's easy to find the long board, but it's really hard to find wide board. So if I want to minimize the amount of waste, I want to operate on the narrowest board possible. So I'm actually going to rotate this. It's X form. Rotate. Select the whole thing. I'm done selecting it. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to make it a move. So I've moved that over. I deleted these lines out. I put a quarter inch fillet on all these corners. And now I'm going to tool path it. I'm always going to do the pocket before I do the cutout. So I'm going to go tool path. I'm going to cut a pocket. It actually doesn't matter which side of the line I clip on because a, a pocket by definition is always inside the line. I'm going to use a quarter inch flat end mill through here. And because it's a pocket not too deep, I'm going to go a feed rate of 100 and a plunge rate of 50. Work my way down here. The cut parameters are good. I'm actually going to do a parallel spiral to go in instead of a zigzag. And I do want to select finishing to clean it all up after that pocket's cut. Depth of cut, I don't need to do that because I'm only going to go down about 0.2. Breakthrough, linking parameters. Again, these are all absolute. This is a negative value, a point two. Okay, so there's my tool path for the pocket. The next tool path I'm going to do is a contour. This direction is important. I'm going to go clockwise around the outside of it. I'm going to use that same tool, a quarter and straight bit, 150. That blue cross holds my settings. Under cut parameters here, I'm going clockwise. The bit's on the outside of my part, and that's what I want. Okay. And then I definitely need to set my depth of cut here. The rule is less than the diameter of the cutter, so I'm going to go 0.22 on that. Lead in, lead out, I'm going to turn off. Breakthrough, multi-passes, tabs. I am going to set my tabs on this. I'm going to make them automatic, and I want to tab all my parts. And 20,000 is probably good. Okay, linking parameters. Again, these are all absolute. Um, this is hardwood, so it's negative 13 sixteenths, which is 0.8125. Pull that setting, and now I've tool path the outside of it. Go to verify, make sure it looks okay. I'm going to verify in an isometric view. And, oops, what I did. Only one of these is selected. I need to select both of these. So both are selected. I'm going to hit verify. Now ISO view. Runs the pocket first and then runs the cutout on the outside. Okay. And then I, I save my master cam file. And then after I've done that, I need to convert all this into numeric code with the G1 button. I, I need to do this on the flash drive. And now it's taking all that information and converting it into Cartesian coordinates. Um, and then that's the code that the techno actually is going to run out in the shop. So you know, travel to this coordinate. Here's your speed, a feed rate of 100. And then you can see the Z values going down as it's entering into the wood there. Okay. Any questions on any of that? Okay. If I click on this right here, it's going to take off the visual of my tool pass. And then what I want to do now is I'm actually going to go back and delete all of this out. Actually, I save the file first because I don't want to lose my file. And then I'm going to do these modifications to get the inlay cut out. So I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to go X form offset contour. I'm going to select 
this as a chain. I'm done selecting it. I want to actually offset it inside, so I want it smaller. And I think I'm going to offset it uh, 10,000, so 0 0.01. Now I don't want to copy it. I just want to move it in. So now this is going to be the outline for the piece I'm laser engraving. So now with this, I go File, Save As. I'm actually going to save it as a DXF. And then with that DXF, I'm going to bring this DXF into Corel Draw. Okay. So I open up Corel Draw. This red thing right here, the way I got this red thing to be 10 thousandths less in the pocket was I went File, Import, and I brought in this DXF, and I clicked it right here. And then from there, uh, I made my object properties. I set a hairline red to make it a cutout. So that's how I create the hexagon. And then I created my words inside of that for whatever. <laughs> Okay, there's a laser cut out right there. Before I put it in, I want to make sure I knock out my letters all the way. And the other thing I want to do as well is I want to sand this before it goes in the pocket. Okay, so then here's my laser cut coaster or whatever it is. It's going to fit in there. I just have this, I don't know, metallic blue paper I was going to put behind. You really want, this stuff is actually pretty expensive. So I'm going to use as little as possible. And I'm going to just take that to the back. So I'm actually just going to take just a couple teeny little tabs right here. And I'm going to take these on as well. So it sits flat at the bottom of the pocket. And once I have enough glue in the pocket, and then I'm just going to use a squeeze clamp the that glue dries. And then it'll look like that. We're all done.